Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm going to show you a kind of fun little woodworking project you can do to practice your skills or maybe just take a break from everything else you're doing. I did a sculpted gunstock style table saw fence handle here, and the other one, as you saw, was a black high gloss lacquered fence handle. And it all starts with the wood, and what I'm using is curly maple. And I should mention, curly maple doesn't come from a curly maple tree. It comes from, it's called big leaf maple. The curly part is just these really cool figured lines you see here. You can see here, the first thing I'm doing is just squaring it up on the table saw using my shop made push stick that is sacrificial so I can cut right through my saw. Moving on, I just wanted to give a bit of an angle and you'll see what I'm doing here in a second, but I want to get good consistent angles that I'm going to be cutting here on the bandsaw. And I'm doing that with just a little shim I made. This isn't super scientific if I was making these in a huge batch, I'd find a little better jig to do, but this worked pretty well for this type of project. The one thing I really wanted to make sure I had right was the small end is the same size as where my table saw fence. So when it's all sculpted in the end, it's going to fit just perfectly to the end of my table saw fence. And you'll see a little bit more on that when we attach it near the end. And I've never seen one of these made, so everything I'm doing here was just kind of off the cuff. So you can see it's not exactly scientific. I'm just tracing my hand on here, and uh, I'm going to end up power carving it down to a comfortable shape. Again, I haven't seen this done, so don't know if this is the best way. I'd love to hear in the comments if you have a better way to do it, because um, this was really just kind of off the cuff. And speaking of new things, if this is the first time to my channel, welcome. I appreciate you watching. And if you like what you see, please hit subscribe up in the corner there. One of the reasons I love these types of projects is it gives you a chance to practice a new skill without really spending any money. This is just a scrap piece of maple I had laying around. These sanding spheres are really pretty inexpensive. And when you're done, you actually have something that's functional that you can keep in your shop for a long, long time that you can say you made. And it just makes you a little bit happier every time you use it. I didn't have a master plan when I started this. I was inspired by the look and feel of some gun stocks, how they just look really cool and feel really comfortable in your hand. Unlike the round kind of stock knob, these ones is really going to be contoured to my personal grip. I don't know how well it would fit anybody else, but in the end, it ended up fitting me just like a glove. I moved on to the fine grit sanding sphere uh, to get some of those big scratches out, and that's what I'm doing here is once I got the rough shape where I want it, I was just going to keep going to get all those big scratches out. And after the sanding spheres, I moved on to just the rasp, which you can listen to here for a second. I don't know if I'm alone in loving that sound, but I thought it was kind of fun. Anyway, from the rasp, I moved down to sandpaper. You can see I'm just getting finer and finer. Keep going, tuning it up a little bit at the files I needed, and I ended up sanding it all the way up to 320 grit. And you can see here we got a pretty nice looking little handle by the time it was all said and done. SawStop specifically makes a metric thread, which just coincidentally happens to thread into a 3 8 inch hole just perfect. So that's what I'm drilling here is a 3 8 inch hole. And you can see there the M10, 1.5, whatever metric, something or other, that's going to be the size bolt you need. And let me get, do you a favor is get yourself a longer bolt than this and drill a deeper hole. Is Someone pointed out after I had this built that if I smack it with my hip, I could break it off. And I do that all the time. I haven't broken it yet, but that is definitely something I'm probably going to do. And so one of these handles I built, I put like a 3 inch rod straight into it. So that's what I would recommend. Get yourself a much longer threaded bolt. I definitely think epoxy is the way to go. It's not so threaded in there that it's never going to budge, so the epoxy is definitely necessary. And when I set it to dry, I let it upside down so that all that epoxy would flow down into it there. Finishing is always my favorite part of any project, and I'm using the Osmo 1101 Thin here, and it is just really satisfying to see it go on. I'm not going to go super in-depth into the finishing process. I actually have a blog and another video entirely on finishing if you want some more details on how to get a really perfect dust-free finish in even a dirty garage. But I'll give you kind of the quick rundown of putting this 1101 on here. Let it soak on for about 10 minutes, wiped it off, came back the next day, added the Osmo 3043, did two coats of that, ended up with a really nice satin sheen. It is a pretty foolproof, really easy finish to do. The lacquer finish I do here in a little bit is the exact opposite of that. And in the end, I'd really like to hear your opinion in the comments of which finish you thought looked better overall. This kind of natural, where you really get to see and feel the wood grain, or the high gloss, high lacquer finish. Okay, we have all the coats of finish on there. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about those O-rings at the end of the second handle. But you wanted something on there so it was not wood on metal. And you can see it didn't line up quite perfect, but that O-ring made it really snug. And it actually works just as intended. Even fits my hand just right. 
All right, enough of those shots. Let's move on to the next handle. That black handle is actually made out of the same chunk of curly maple as the natural handle. And don't worry, I'm going to get into how to do all the die jobs yourself. If you do want the size of these handles, I have it right there. That's exactly what I squared it up to. And that taper, again, was just the size of my table saw fence where it met up. So drawing the same lines as the first handle, and that's going to be about where the similarities end. I used the same shim as I did on the first handle to cut this one out. Got it to shape, bring it over to the oscillating belt sander, and now is where I'm going to cut my eighth edge on this. So that's how I'm going to get that octagonal shape, is using this 45 degree chamfer bit here. You've got to be really, really careful of your fingers here, and you can see when I make the next cut, I got a little bit of a safety buffer in between my fingers and the router. But no kickbacks or anything like that, it went pretty smooth. See, I'm using a concrete flow, it's actually my go-to push stick. actually surprised at how easy this was to do but when you're using a router table just be so careful of any kickback you don't want to pull your hands into that router bit i want to just keep the style consistent throughout so for the end i just dropped this down put a new throat plate on there so that wouldn't fall into the hole and now i'm just going to put just a real slight chamfer the whole way around on the end of it if you have any questions or concerns about how I'm using this router table, I'm never above taking advice. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you think of a better way, a safer way that I could be using my router table, I'm definitely appreciate any pointers on that. And because these were all super straight edges, the sanding was actually pretty easy. I put a 180 belt on my oscillating belt sander and I just went around, hit all eight sides, just rotated over until I got everything sanded just perfect. Came over, found my center, and did the same 3 8 holes you saw me add before. And now I'm going to show you how I get that dye job. And this is just denatured alcohol, black trans tint. I'm going to add links to both these in the description. And I just squirt it in there until I find a color I like. And normally it takes me a few tries, but this first try I got just the kind of blackish gray that I was going for. This isn't actually stain, which some of you might be thinking it's actually dye. And there's some good explanations on the internet of the difference between stain and dye. But you see this dye on curly maple, which is what this wood is on high-end guitars, a lot like the Paul Reed Smith. And it gives a really cool, really impactful look, especially when, this, when I do this high-gloss lacquer finish on it. And like I mentioned earlier, there's just such a cool opportunity to learn a new skill without spending any money. And maybe you want to build a guitar and you want to do a similar die job to this, but you don't know if you can, if you don't feel that confident yet. You can build something small like this, get your skills up there, get the confidence going so you can tackle that next bigger project without spending any money and just a little bit of time. This might be a lesson on a lot of things, but it's not a lesson on how to spray lacquer. I just went down to Woodcraft, got a can of this Deft, I think it was, did I think four coats total. I waited 30 minutes before because that's what the back of the can said and ended up with a kind of a mediocre orange peely finish but I'm going to show you how we can sand all that out of there and again I don't know how a bald guy gets a hair in a finish but I did. After two weeks you can see here it's kind of an orange peely kind of mediocre finish and since this was just kind of a fun thing for practice I tried an entirely new method that I've never seen before. don't know if it's recommended but it worked perfectly for this project. So what I did is I was wet sanding with my wet stone, and these are for normally sharpening knives or blades, and they're super flat, and this is a thousand grit, which is the exact type of sandpaper that I would have used anyway. And you can see it actually does a really good job of evening out that orange peel. If you don't have wet stones, don't go out and buy a bunch of them to buff lacquer with. That's not what they're made for. They're made for sharpening stones, and they're pretty expensive, actually. But if you are a woodworker who has wet stones, they did a perfect job at smoothing out those flat spots. You can see here it's not quite a full Paul Reed Smith perfect flat and I didn't want to sand through the finish which is why I left those shiny spots there but it'll be good enough for a table saw fence handle but now we get to bring it all the way back up to a show pony shine and we're going to do that with this 3M perfected finish kit that is normally for automotive compounds but it's going to work pretty well for this. Starting with the stage one on my wool pad here and just kind of a medium speed not too high you can see just how fast it buffs that out and gives it a pretty cool little sheen. Working it around there and it looks pretty good already, but we can do better than that. And once you feel like you got it pretty good with stage one there, put on the second pad with the number two in the perfected stage. 
and buff it out just like the first. I do have a full video on buffing to a high gloss. It's a little more in depth and I did it on a skateboard I built for my nephew actually. A lot more thorough process than you'll see here, but you can see just how quick it is to get to that really high sheen. There's one more stage. I don't know how much you actually tell the difference between stage two and stage three. Some people told me that stage three is kind of overkill, but I got it, so I'm gonna use it. When you're done, this is what it should look like. No orange peel, very smooth, very glossy. And some of you may be asking why somebody would want one of these handles, let alone two of these handles, and you're asking the wrong question because I actually have three of these handles and I do not have an answer for why somebody needs three of these. I just got a little bit of fun making these and decided to do a couple different styles since I was gonna do a video for them anyway. And this was made by Aaron Ludwood Woodworking. I don't do any turning, he turned this for me and it was really cool. I love the mini baseball bat style he did. These O-rings that I mentioned earlier, I needed a buffer, but so it wasn't just wood on metal, and I found these at Home Depot, and they fit on just perfect. You can see why I didn't like my original one there, but this O-ring snugged up just perfect. You can see in there, it squishes in, and it was just as tight, maybe even better than the original handle. I'd love to hear in the comments which one of these handles you liked best, and it's definitely okay to say the Mini Bat by Aaron Ludwig, because that one might be my favorite, but if you liked this video, please subscribe for more just like it. Thanks so much for watching.